The last few videos on my channel have been talking about various new features in Python 3.11, from a general overview to the Tomolib module to exception groups. If you want to have a look at any of those, they're in the cards. In this video, we'll be talking about async IO task groups. This is the last video I have planned on kind of a more detailed explanation of new things in Python 3.11. If there is anything else you want to see me talk about, do let me know in the comments and I will go over it. This wasn't touted as one of the bigger improvements. This was actually kind of you know, put in under the improved modules rather than the release highlights. However, as someone that uses async a lot, this is actually a really cool thing and you know fixes a problem literally that I came across last night while I was trying to program something. The task groups would have been really useful if I didn't need compatibility with older Python versions. So I'm gonna talk about that here. I've got some code already on the screen. So I've got a simple count task that we're gonna use as an example to show off uh, these task groups. And I'm also gonna create uh, a main uh, async function here. And then I'm just gonna do async io.run main in the bottom here so we can run that. So a task group is more or less what it sounds like to be completely honest with you. It is a context manager um, that you can add tasks to. So you can append your task to this task group and it will wait until all of these tasks are done before moving on to the next bit of code. If an error or multiple errors are encountered within the task group, it'll actually uh, raise an exception group, which is kind of funny, actually. It's, kind of, it's almost the first thing to kind of use exception groups in itself. If you're unfamiliar with exception groups, I did do the video on that, as I said, in the start. But I'm gonna start creating this task group now. So you can do an async with, so this is an asynchronous context manager specifically async io dot task group and we're going to call that as tg and then to create a task within this we just do tg dot create task and then i'm going to put the count in there and we're going to say five and then we're also going to say uh, have another one that says 10. i'm fully aware i can use a for loop but i feel like it might be a bit clearer uh, to have it like this so don't shout at me for not using a for loop so if we run that, this is all the stuff, I've just come off the back of recording the exception one actually. Uh, if we run that now, then we can see that our tasks run perfectly fine. And actually if that's something I forgot to do, I forgot to put, I was gonna put like all done here to show uh, that the all done only gets printed once all of these tasks are complete. So we can see they're running asynchronously, have your one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, and then it goes six, seven, eight, nine, ten, as this second task takes a little bit longer than the first, and we have our all done in here. This replaces asyncho.gather. Uh, if you needed the results of them, because asyncho.gather had obviously, it, it returned the results of each task as a list, you would actually need to, you know, say do t1 equals that, t2 equals that, and then once they're done, uh, print, well this is going to be none in both instances, but uh, you would do something like this, so you print t1.result and print t2.result and then you'll get your, you know, your none and then none again um, because it, it doesn't return anything. Actually if I make it return n that might be a little bit clearer. Uh, so we now have a you know, 5 and 10 uh, in there as well and that is how you would do it. So you don't actually have any sort of you know task group dot results or anything. I think that would be quite nice to have actually, but I just looked through the autocomplete and it wasn't there. Uh, so maybe something in 3.12 uh, to be added. Python have made it clear that task groups are now the kind of officially accepted way to do things. If, uh, or for new code, it said to use task groups over um, asyncho.gather. Of course, if you need compatibility with older versions of Python, if you're doing like a Python package index library or something, then you would still use gather rather than the task groups. But if it only needs to support 3.11, then you can use task groups and should use task groups instead, according to Python. Now, before I go, I do want to you know, briefly talk about this exception handling thing that it has. So if I just get rid of this, because we don't need it, and then we copy paste this and we start giving it some invalid tasks. So say we want it to count to a string of four or to a value of 1.5. Both of these should fail and both of them do. And we get this exception group here if I, this, we get quite a big exception. Uh, so we have this huge information about how the exception group was raised, but then we also get the um, the two sub exceptions. So we have our first one, this is caused by our task here. Uh, so it's uh, can only concatenate string, not int to string. 
And then we have our second one here, float object cannot be interpreted as an integer, and we get them both at once. So in previous versions of Python, if we were to do something similar with asyncode.gather, for example, then we would only get this first exception and we wouldn't get an exception for the second one until we fix this one and ran it again. But now that we get both exceptions at once, we can actually fix both of them uh, and you know we'll get perfectly functioning codes a little bit quicker. You can also see the improved error messages in action here. So you know the arrow is pointing to the plus and you know you have your arrows pointing just to the statement uh, here, which is kind of a bit weird. You'd think it would just point to the N again, but I don't know. I guess some things they didn't do that for. But I mean, either way, you can pretty easily work out what it's referencing. So I suppose it doesn't matter too much in that case. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say about task groups. They are ultimately very simple, very cool, um, you know, really useful little utility, but ultimately very simple to use. I guess that is the good thing about them. But yeah, if you do like the video, then make sure to leave a like and let me know. And subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If there's anything in particular that you want me to cover on a future video, make sure to leave a comment down below. I read every single one, so your feedback would be greatly appreciated. If you want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so in one of two ways. The first of which is to become a member using the join button. The second of which is to become a patron using the link in the description. One pound a month on either, and you can be on this screen like these people. Thank you to Adam Dreyer for being a super patron. And I will see you in the next video for whatever I do. I haven't planned what that is yet, uh, but I would have done, obviously, by the time it comes around to it. So whatever it is, I will see you for that.